Good afternoon. I'm Eugene Sutton, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland and the Diocesan Center here. Yesterday, as you all know, was a very sad day in America as yet another mass slaughter was committed by yet another disturbed and heavily armed man who had access to guns. Every day in America, 30 people are killed and murdered each day. 30,000 Americans are killed every year by guns and added to it an estimated 100,000 people who are shot and not killed. Think of it. In about seven years' time, a million Americans have been shot by guns. Clearly, it's an epidemic. And even today, as our nation is taking the lead in the world to get rid of weapons of mass destruction in Syria, and yet the world looks at us and say, what about the weapons of mass destruction in your own streets? Will you be serious about getting rid of them? In Maryland, we are. We've worked together, civic leaders, clergy, uh, faith leaders, political leaders, uh, to see what we could get done here. And we're very gratified today to have uh, Senator Mike Bush, the Speaker of the House, um, Mayor uh, Stephanie Rollins Blake, Senator Frosch, and others who have been uh, very helpful to us in getting the guns out of people who will do harm. And we're very grateful this day to have Faiths United Against Gun Violence and our own Vinny DeMarco, who will, um, who will lead this program from here on out. Thank you and welcome everyone. For being Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bishop Sutton. I just want to say that no one has done more for public health and to reduce gun violence in Maryland than Bishop Gene Sutton. Bishop Sutton led the ecumenical leaders group in coming to Annapolis and making this, getting this done. So let's have a big hand. Bishop Eugene Sutton. A great, a great man, and Mar Maryland is very lucky uh, to have him with us. I'm Vinny DeMarco, I'm the president of Marylanders to Prevent Gun Violence, and we are very pleased here today to be releasing a radio ad which we'll play for you in a couple minutes, which will highlight the benefits of this wonderful new law. The O'Malley Brown administration proposed one of the best gun violence prevention laws in the country. Governor O'Malley, Lieutenant Governor Brown fought hard for it, and we thank them very much. As of October 1, Maryland will have one of the six best gun violence prevention laws in the country. But no one is more responsible for it happening than our first speaker today, Speaker Mike Bush. Speaker Bush, from the beginning, right after the Newtown tragedy, made clear to everyone that he was committed to getting something done, and he worked very hard on a very difficult issue, and he made sure not only that Maryland passed the law, but that Maryland passed a law with teeth, a law that will work, a law that will save lives. We owe a lot to Speaker Bush for his courage and his smarts and his ability to get this done. I'm thrilled to introduce Speaker Mike Bush. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny, and uh, Reverend Sutton. It's great to be with you today, Madam Mayor. It's good to be with you. And Thanks for everyone being here. Uh, Vinny was much too gracious in his introduction. Uh, there's a lot of legislators that are here today that played key roles, have been great advocates for gun control over the years. Uh, obviously, uh, the tragedy that took place in Sandy Hook was an impetus uh, for us to come together, take a hard look at uh, what we could do to improve taking uh, weapons off our streets and limiting violence uh, that they create uh, in many areas and communities in the state of Maryland. Uh, what this bill will do on October 1st when it's implemented, it will have a licensure provision and fingerprinting and background checks for those who purchase a handgun. Why do we do that? That's to limit straw purchases for people going in and having someone else buy a gun for them. So the data that we uh, received uh, gave uh, proof to the fact that licensure and fingerprinting helps cut down illegal handguns. That is the first thing. We found out, and I think it was pretty appalling for Ken, when you did get a handgun, you only had to take a 20-minute course online to qualify to purchase a handgun. Whereas, if you're getting a hunting license, it's a 14-hour course. We've changed that to make sure that people have 
to go out and actually understand how to use a handgun before they purchase it uh, for their own protection. Uh, the other thing we did, and thanks to Senator Frosch and, and uh, Delegate uh, Clippinger, is we dealt with what is known as lost and stolen and audits uh, for gun dealers because we were the third highest state for lost and stolen guns coming out of the dealerships. That should not be the case in a state like Maryland. So they are to be uh, uh, re recognized for their hard work on this. Delegate Kiefer Mitchell, who stands behind me, uh, was a great proponent for doing away with what are known as cop killer bullets uh, that pierce body armor. Uh, there's no need to have something that powerful uh, on our streets. Uh, the other initiatives that were supported by everyone, I'm happy to say, Delegate Oaks is here and Madam Mayor, that everyone in Baltimore City supported this legislation, every legislator in Annapolis, uh, is that we limited magazines, the use of magazines and semi-automatic weapons, from a 20 caliber to a 10 caliber clip, because what took place in Sandy Hook and when Gabby Giffords uh, was shot, uh, the Congresswoman, was when they changed the clip and gave someone a chance to get between the gun uh, uh, user and the victims in those cases and cut down on the violence. Uh, let me say that the vast majority of gun violence takes place with handguns, but the significant mass shootings takes place with semi-automatic weapons. We banned the semi-automatic weapons uh, in the state of Maryland going forward. And we think that we are going to put Maryland in the forefront of what we believe is responsible, common sense legislation. But the whole General Assembly, Governor O'Malley, Lieutenant Governor Brown, deserve credit for this bill. These individuals behind me stood up uh, for this legislation, and I'm proud of each and every one of them. But uh, in, in finishing, and I know I'm going on a little bit, but, but we put a lot of time and effort in this. I do want to mention Kathy DeMay, who worked very hard in the House of Delegate from Montgomery County. But this is important. It saves lives. Uh, you know, we are so concerned about our children, and a lot of these incidents take place at school. The governor of the General Assembly put $25 million into school safety just to make sure our law enforcement officers are on duty to make sure that that does not happen in our school system in the state of Maryland. I want to thank uh, Vinny DeMarco and everyone in the gun advocacy group uh, to cut down on violence for all their hard work and effort. Stay vigilant because the battle is never over. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, very, very much. We really are lucky in Maryland to have a great Speaker of the House, Mike, Mike Bush. You know, the Speaker mentioned that the Baltimore City delegation voted unanimously for this legislation. That was not a coincidence. It's because our wonderful mayor and Baltimore City Commissioner Batts worked hard to convince them that this is the right thing to do for the city. And I'm glad that Lieutenant Colonel of Leoe is here representing Commissioner Batts. And I'm thrilled that Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake is here. I'm honored to be a Baltimore City resident and call her my own mayor. She's been a great leader. And on this issue, she was there from the beginning, fighting hard, and did a wonderful job. And we're thrilled that she's with us right now. Mayor? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vinny. I always appreciate any opportunity that I get to uh, work with you. I think in many cases, uh, for issues that are important to uh, Baltimore and to Marylanders, you are the soul of those issues. And I really appreciate your, your leadership. And everyone here, when I look around the room at the uh, collection of leaders and advocates that we have here, it is uh, no surprise that we had uh, victory uh, with this legislation, and it's no surprise that I believe with this campaign uh, in support of the legislation, we will again stand out as uh, leaders when it comes to uh, gun violence. Not that we're done. I know that many of us are here with heavy hearts. Um, as been mentioned, we're still reacting to yesterday's news uh, of the uh, another senseless act of gun violence uh, in D.C. Uh, where uh, too many Americans lost their lives, too many Americans who work on behalf of each and every one of us whose uh, only fault was showing up to work mm. on time. 
and it is it is it continues to devastate me not uh, just that it happens I mean that's a, that's bad enough but it seems that instead of getting more and more incensed we are getting more and more accepting mm -hmm. of that level of violence uh, that um, that the call to action is not a more bipartisan call for sensible gun laws uh, sickens me as a, a proud American who knows that we can be better uh, than what we've been. And each day that goes by that we haven't put sensible gun laws in place to protect our children, to protect our families and communities, is another day that we are doing the same thing over and over again, but ex except, ex expecting uh, different results. And you know, at the, the bottom line is if we don't come together to put sensible laws on the books and make sure that those laws are enforced, uh, we cannot say that we have done all that we can do for our community. So it, is, it was important for me to stand here uh, for the work that will begin in support of the Firearm Safety Act of 2013. I have to again thank uh, the, the legislators. The, their leadership uh, was stellar in Annapolis. I'm very, very proud of the Baltimore City delegation. As, you know, each year I feel like we are working better and better and, and more closely uh, as a unit, and when we do, we have great results. And I'm looking forward to another good session uh, with the the legislators. I also want to thank uh, Bishop Sutton, and um, again, Vinnie, and w to Speaker Bush. You know, we appreciate. I appreciate uh, the fact that uh, Speaker Bush no longer lives in Baltimore, but he has. <laughs> But he has Baltimore on his mind, and, and, and uh, I certainly appreciate your willingness to partner with me so we can make uh, Baltimore better for everyone. And uh, you know, as, as the Lieutenant Governor says, then Marylander will be, be Maryland will be better for more Marylanders. So thank you again for your support of the Firearm Safety Act. I'm looking forward to hearing the commercial. Yeah, so thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before we play the ad and introduce everyone around here, I just want to have a couple words from another key leader. You know, for the last 20 years, Senator Brian Frosch has been fighting for gun violence prevention legislation and has chaired the Judicial Proceedings Committee of Maryland State Senate. And no one has done more over the last few years to try to get this legislation through. And I can tell you, this past session, he was a giant in battling back bad amendments into the wee hours and brilliantly crafting the legislation with his colleagues in the House to make it one of the best pieces of legislation uh, to prevent gun violence in the country. Maryland is very, very lucky to have his one of the leaders, Senator Brian Frosch. Thank you, Vinnie. Uh, thank you for the kind words, and thank you for the great work that you did during the legislative session. Uh, this would not have happened without you. It would not have happened with the, without the other folks who are standing in this uh, semicircle. Uh, I think, as Bishop Sutton uh, alluded to, we have a public health crisis in the United States, and it's gun violence. Uh, it is an epidemic. And what we did, very simply, in the General Assembly, was try to implement best practices from around the country, put them in place in Maryland in order to save lives. And as the speaker alluded to a few moments ago, fingerprint licensing will save lives. The ban on assault weapons will save lives. The limit on ammunition in gun magazines will save lives. Giving the state police oversight over gun dealers will save lives. And because that is a provision that is somewhat uh, get somewhat less attention than the others. Let me just talk about that for a minute, if I may. Um, One percent of the gun dealers in the United States sell 60 percent of the guns that end up being used in crimes. We have had a poster child in Maryland for the bill that we passed and the provisions that we passed, giving our state police better oversight over these gun dealers. It was a shop called Valley Guns in Baltimore County. They were cited for 900 violations of federal law. Uh, it took the ATF nine years to put them out of business. During that period of time, Valley Guns couldn't account for a quarter of its inventory. That's like if Best Buy couldn't find a quarter of its TV sets, <laughs> or a Volkswagen dealer couldn't find a quarter of its Beatles. They wouldn't stay in business. 
The reason these guys were in business is because they were selling guns to criminals. And indeed, about 500 of their guns ended up being used in crimes in Maryland and in our neighboring jurisdictions. Giving our state police the authority to put, to discipline, and if necessary, put rogue gun dealers out of business will save lives. In essence, what we've got here is, as I said before, best practices from all around the country. The gun uh, fingerprint licensing is in place in New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Hawaii. They have lower rates of gun deaths and gun violence than we or other jurisdictions with similar demographics do. And um, can't wait for this bill to go into effect in two weeks. And I look forward to hearing the radio ad. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Price. Thank you very much. Right. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play this radio ad. If you'll excuse me. Um, and, um, We're a high-tech operation. Yeah. A high-tech operation. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Bishop, for the boombox. I haven't played one of these in a while. So uh, I hope I remember how to do it. So I'm going to hit the play button, and we're going to hear it. And I have copies here if anybody needs it. In Maryland, we stood up. Because something had to be done. We joined with the governor and the state legislature to enact real solutions to reduce gun violence. I'm a minister. I'm a mother. I'm a hunter. I'm a police chief, and I know that Maryland's new handgun licensing law with fingerprint background checks is one of the best ways to reduce gun violence. Five states already have fingerprint licensing, and on average, have lower rates of gun deaths and gun trafficking than other states. It's reasonable, and it's popular. This law is supported by over 80% of Marylanders, including 68% of gun owners, like me. And most important, it works. It saves lives. Maryland's new law will reduce crime. It should serve as a national model for America. Congress, are you listening? This message is sponsored by Marylanders to Prevent Gun Violence Education Fund. There you go. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm emailing that ad around, so send it out through all your networks. I want to thank Len Lucci, Strategic Campaign Initiatives, and the brilliant work on coming up with it. The last person you heard was, of course, Bishop Sutton, who said, Congress, are you listening? You also heard, you also heard from a hunter, um, Ryan Hopkins, who told you that 68% of gun owners support fingerprint licensing. You heard from Police Chief Jim Johnson from Baltimore County, couldn't be here with us, but is one of the national leaders on this issue. And you heard from a mom. You heard from Jen Poliakonis, who heads Moms Demand Action, and she is here with us, and she and her group did a tremendous amount to get our law passed, and her Force on that ad was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, everyone here. I wanted to thank Vinny for bringing all of this together and getting this educational commercial made. I wanted to thank Speaker Bush and Senator Frosch for everything that they have done. I've never been prouder to be in Maryland until the day that this passed. I feel safer knowing that my children are going to live in a state where the best law in the country for gun violence exists. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So, so ladies and gentlemen, before we answer questions, just want to make sure you have a, here the people who really made this happen. In the faith community, Bishop Sutton led a great group. We have Bishop Larry Lee Thomas from Anne County, Reverend Gwynn, Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance, Art Abramson, and Katie Locklear from Baltimore Jewish Council, Dean Hyatt, here the dean of this very cathedral. Thank you for hosting us, Dean, here and for all your great work. And of course, we had key legislators. Maryland has wonderful legislators. You heard them uh, mention that we heard from Senator Frosch. We have our, our three uh, wonderful, wonderful delegates who did so much. You three want to come up together and. Beaver Mitchell, the Clinton and Daniel Oates. I'll just say ditto. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's have a big hand for the team that was uh, made, uh, made this happen. It was a great, great collaborative effort and a national model. Any, any questions? Yes. Um, how, long, how large of an ad buyer are you making? Where are you making the ad buyer? 
The ad buy is the Baltimore media market, and we don't know yet how much. We're still trying to raise the money, but it's, it's going to be heard. If you, if you listen to radio in Baltimore, you'll hear it. Any other questions? How long has this been in the works, and how long has been planning this ad campaign? Up with the it, it, it's a good question. Uh, we've been planning it since the law passed. Because once the law passed, we knew that it would be important for right before the effective date for the message to get out to the public on how good this law is and how effective it will be. So from the time the law passed, we've been planning this, and now we're thrilled that the ads are out there playing. Okay? Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We're coming together to recognize the uh, implementation of the uh, new Maryland gun control laws that will become effective October the uh, 1st, and we're excited about taking the lead in, in this nation of ours and preventing violence through uh, preventing the flow of guns flowing into the wrong hands of people who commit violent crimes against our community, against our citizens, and against our young people. They're saying that it's going to help save a lot of lives. And um, more criminals are buying guns from the people that are selling them. And in order to like prevent that, they had to like pass this law, and it's going to be like a model for the United States as a whole. Any voice that can be spoken uh, for the right thing to be done is, is, is a great thing, a great event.